That's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, folks, to a Notre Dame recruiting update. And I have some general questions I need answers to about it. Edition of the Always Irish Show. As always, thank you for being here. You can find the program on YouTube. Do it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. Notifications on. That way you'll be alerted every time a new episode drops. Twitter. Search bar. Always Irish. Rat. Always Irish Inc. Emails. Always Irish India. Gmail.com. Audio only. Anywhere you want me, you can locate me. Call in shows. We're off the buy, which means... Regular call-in shows back in order. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, 9 o'clock Central start. Be there, be square, folks. And of course, Fighting Irish Wire. Make it an everyday regular stop to the website. Find everything I'm writing and everybody else on the team. Do a good job, put a lot of work into it. So make sure if you haven't yet, Fighting Irish Wire is a part of your Notre Dame media routine, folks. So, yeah, listen, listen. I know you guys. You don't have to tell me, especially if you're one of the younger guys in Notre Dame media I'm friends with. I get it. Johnny's getting old. Johnny's getting old. I admit that. I know that. I'm pushing 40. All right, and I feel 80, okay? Too much Notre Dame stress taking years off my life, including this September. Who knows how many decades I lost in the first two weeks of this year. But I know I'm old. But some of this modern age recruiting stuff going on, And some of the things going on that people are acting like are just normal are not to me. They're not to me. And I know I'm old and I'm out of touch. And I I know all that. But some of this is bigger than what people are making it. Some of these changes, it doesn't seem big, but it is. And and so I want to go over this today. Notre Dame recruiting updates, where we're at, and some of these big picture items that are changing the entire recruiting landscape that I don't feel are getting talked about enough. And it's affecting Notre Dame, and we have to pivot and adjust. Let's get into this, okay? So here's the first thing. I know nobody cares about my old opinion. But in the old days, if you committed to a school verbally, then you started looking elsewhere, flirting with other schools, taking those visits. The other guys in the class that are committed that aren't looking elsewhere would give you that look of like, buddy, are you with us or against us? And if you're not all in, get out of here because we're on a different mission. And if you're not fully bought in, then then get out of here. And I'm not talking like from the coaches. Talking like from the other committed verbal guys. I can remember a time where he used to be like, are you with us or against us, dude? This isn't cool. I get it. I get it. These players fought for more autonomy to be able to do what they want to do with their lives and make money and make these decisions and not be beholden to these coach emperors that run their life and they have no flexibility and they have no say. And if things aren't fair, they can't leave. I get all of it. I get all of it. I'm just saying I'm having some struggles adjusting. I understand the modernity of it all. And that these guys want more autonomy and all that. I get all of it. And I get why it's happening. It's just a big adjustment for me. And a huge adjustment for the Notre Dame staff. Because here's the thing. You can't rely on anything anymore if you're one of these coaches. Now, luckily... Freeman's more capable of adjusting to the new dynamics than I am. 
He just is. He's more tied into it. But when you're in a position where you can't even trust verbal commitments to any level or any degree, that changes everything in your recruiting operation. It means you can never close out an area in your recruiting program and just know we wanted three of this position. We have three of that position verbally committed. We're going to keep touching base with them to make sure things are still good. But we know they're in the fold. Now we could go divert more resources to attacking an area where we are weaker or need to boost our numbers or we're behind and really have to make a splash. You can't do that now. You can't do that anymore because these verbal commitments aren't commitments at all. And this isn't even including late arriving NIL deals at the last minute and all that that you're going to have to deal with. Before you even get to those briefcases at the, at the end of the signing period that you don't know where they're going to come from and how much is in it, you just can't rely on verbal commitments. And that's tough. Like, yeah, there's some guys you just know are Notre Dame, you know, no matter what, Notre Dame families. But this whole dynamic where it even used to be where Mason Plummer, the, the recruiting guy at Evani, would say, John, all a verbal is anymore is you naming a school as maybe a leader in your recruitment. But that's about it. I, that was a few months ago we had that discussion. I feel like it means even less than that now. I I just, it's just tough. It's tough for me to wrap my mind around. Why verbally commit? If you're still looking all over and, and you're, I why verbally commit at all really early then? Uh, I don't know, uh, but it's, it's uncomfortable. Because I'm now in a position where you could look at a Notre Dame recruiting thing and the guys are less in the fold than they've ever been in the fold before, even after an NDs by their name. So I, I un it's just hard to get things done. You're never done at any position group. You got to recruit them all, 100% all the time. And for all your guys committed at backups, one, two, and three that you're on all the time. Because you just can't trust the dynamic. It's a lot more work that has to be done now. Just to maintain. Not even get ahead. So I struggle with this dynamic. And how it's changed. Um, and I fully realize a part of this is. I love Notre Dame more than these players do. I get that. I totally understand that to me, my world is all Notre Dame and I couldn't imagine anybody not wanting to be a part of it. I acknowledge not every kid grows up that way, the way I did. I get it. But I still think a verbal commitment should mean more than it means. And it doesn't. That's just something I'm going to have to deal with. I just don't like it. It's borderline pointless at, at this point. I, I don't, it's frustrating. Um, and again, I'm not even including the rate, late arriving NIL deals, not even including that, but just the idea of being a verbal, but it's like Bowen's a great example, verbal to Notre Dame, but everything I read is it's a toss up between Notre Dame and Oklahoma and Texas A&M. It's a toss up. Why is there a Notre Dame by his name if it's an equal playing field toss-up? There shouldn't be a Notre Dame there then. These are people not saying Notre Dame's still in a slight lead, but he's looking it out. I'm hearing and reading it's an equal playing field. Then why is there a Notre Dame by the guy's name then? I struggle philosophically and practically with how that goes and what it does. I, I know I'm old and out of touch, but how can a staff ever move on to the next priority when you have to be on alert 24-7 at every position for everybody? It's hard. It's hard. Um, 
in again, a part of this is Notre Dame's going to have to get with NIL. You're, you're not writing blank checks off oil money like Jimbo. Where's that getting him, by the way? Still waiting for the, the return on investment of the oil money that bought those classes and the guys losing games left and right. But with NIL, I, I need Notre Dame to get more involved here. I'm not talking blank checks, but get more involved. John, what do you mean? Here's exactly what I mean. And it took me exactly two seconds to come up with this idea. Okay? Two seconds. Number one, I love all of the angles of NIL now that Notre Dame's doing that have to do with education and or community service volunteer work. A lot of our players are involved in those kind of deals, supporting local YMCA, South Bend, all that educational stuff. See Blake Fisher with the kids all the time. I love that. Notre Dame loves that. That's a version of NIL Notre Dame can find palatable because there's a educational and a service component to it. I love all that. And I need Notre Dame to take the next step. What do you mean? Two freaking seconds and I came up with this idea. I want to be driving through Chicago on the Kennedy Expressway, not named after me. And I want to look up and see a billboard that says, hi, this, this just sounds so silly, but it's the easiest thing. Hi, this is Notre Dame starting quarterback, CJ Carr. And the next time you need one, I hope you'll swing by the uh, whatever, the Range Rover export place in the suburbs. There you go. NIL, perfect fit. I'm CJ Carr, Notre Dame's quarterback. And the next time you need a new one, go to the Range Rover in Orland Park. There you go. Big time NIL, Notre Dame quarterback getting the spotlight. You do something cute with Carr is his name. Cars, what you need, you make that connection. Why is that like out of bounds? It is, I came up with that in two seconds. Have CJ Carr on an actual commercial on TV showing in the Chicago area, him throwing passes or weaving between cones or something. And then you show the car doing it. And he's driving a, it's CJ Carr, Notre Dame's quarterback. Next time you need one, get one here. Boom. NIL deal right off the bat. Luxury car company, make the connection beautiful. I don't understand why that is hard or why Notre Dame would be offended by that. Get creative and have fun with this and give your guys an opportunity. That's it. Notre Dame quarterback, CJ Carr, and the next time you need one, go to Bob LaCursio Auto Group in the Chicago suburbs, get you a Mercedes. I, it's not that freaking hard to come up with this stuff. They should pay me and I'll do it. I'll sit there all day and come up with these angles. That It's just the easiest thing to do and I, we need to get with it. I'm serious. So as we enter this, I'm just struggling with the new dynamic. And I know these coaches have to be as well. You can never let your guard down ever at any position 24 seven. It's a lot to ask of these staffs all over the country. It just is. It just, it just is. So let's get back to ND specifically where they're at and some updates that I can gather. I feel like it's a little bit of treading water mode here. The season's kind of in flux. Not great that you can recruit off it. Not a total, night, total, total nightmare. Um, I just, my sense is that we're kind of treading water right now. All right. Running back Edwards looks amazing. I see his tapes every week, tearing it up. Dynamic. Love to see it. Now, here you go, though. Running back. Lamar's looking elsewhere. Love. Trending away from Notre Dame, but still kind of interested. Notre Dame wants a couple of those guys. But now what are you going to do? 
Lamar committed, but looking elsewhere, flirting. Notre Dame can't not stop pursuing other guys. I hope Lamar knows it's no offense to you, but if we don't know if you're in, we have to look for our guy if you're not in. It, this is just a rough dynamic to recruit in with the times. It just is. So then you offer Kyron Jones, a North Carolina guy, garnering uh, garnering some heat. And it and it's just Hillman, a jack of all trades athlete guy. Like, like what they're trying to do, obviously, is learn from what happened in the wide receiver situation last year, where you had a few really good guys committed, and then you thought you were good, and then you lost them, and then you ended up with an empty bag and you're screwed, and the wide receiver room is bad. You're trying to avoid that dynamic at running back. So at least it's good to see that they've learned and that they're trying to kind of not fall down that path again. Um, But it's just very, very hard where you have a verbal commitment and it's just not a commitment. So it leaves you scrambling with your backup of a backup of a backup plan because you never know. So with Lamar looking elsewhere... Uh, that's how you get the Jones offer and then Hillman and athlete, whatever. You got to protect yourself. Got to protect yourself. Love, I don't know what the deal is with that. That's another running back like Will Shipley, where I'm told academics are a huge deal. The family loves academics and all that. Well, then it should be Notre Dame. Should be Notre Dame. Like that's Notre Dame's best angle to get one of these high, high, high star guys is if the family's academically oriented, it's the one thing not everywhere everywhere can uh, offer the way Notre Dame can. So I don't know. But you got to protect yourself so you're offering other guys. Shaky dynamic. I don't like it. It's new age recruiting, though. It's new age recruiting. Bowen? I don't understand. I, I don't get it. Verbally committed to Notre Dame, but I read on Twitter, neck to neck, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Texas A&M. If a verbal doesn't even give the team you're verbaling to the lead, what are we doing here? I I don't get it. It's it's a struggle. Um but I'm not even hearing it that, oh, yeah, Notre Dame's in the in a lead. I've been seeing on Twitter in these YouTube videos, oh, it's neck and neck, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Texas A&M. How, by definition, how can it be neck and neck when the guy verbally committed to Notre Dame and not those other places? By default, that tells me they should be in the lead. And if they're practically not, I don't understand what we're doing here and who it helps. The player or Notre Dame or any other school. I just don't like this dynamic, man. I don't like this dynamic. You can't trust anything ever in this new universe. So, and the other thing that makes me laugh is it's like, oh man, Bowen's interested. What are the other two teams? Oklahoma and Texas A&M. Okay, well... You think Notre Dame had a rough September? Look at Jimbo not getting that uh, return on investment on the oil money. And you look at Oklahoma where it's like, all right, I thought Brent Venables was a defensive guy and that ain't happening either. So both of those schools have issues. So if it's a three horse race between those three and he's already verbal to Notre Dame and all three of them have issues, should be in Notre Dame favor, right? I don't know because I can't trust anything, anything. You hate page D committee. This one, unlike quarterbacks, receivers, secondary players where Notre Dame's never has enough, always needs more of, you might be able to say, you know, offensive line isn't quite as critical of a need um, as some other positions. You hate to see a guy leave like that. And I can see, though, how other schools saying, listen, man, you ain't even the third tackle in the program if you commit there. You're the third tackle in this class if you commit there. Go to USC. You can play right away. We have thin depth up front. Come to L.A., live that lifestyle, 
play right away. If you don't grow up loving Notre Dame and buying into all the values, I see why that would be appealing to you. I do as a high schooler. So that's a little different because he truly was the third rated tackle, not in Notre Dame's program, not in the last two years of recruiting, just in this cycle. So that's tough. Um, and you don't want to lose a guy, but you will run into this when you have really, really good players somewhere stacked up. So that hurts less than, you know, losing a receiver or something you were counting on where the numbers are horrifically low. So I do think they're still looking at finding another tackle, but it is worth noting this was their third ranked tackle in the class. That makes a difference. It, it, it just does. Um, so they're going to want to replace that. It's just, it's not ideal, but at least it's your third rated guy, not your number one rated guy, right? Quarterback 2023. I don't know. Work in progress. I don't know. I don't know if that reclassification with Carr is still on the table or not. Sniffing around other guys, Avery Davis, the Minchie kit, whatever, man. Whatever but it ain't a good place to be. This is not a good place to be right here at this point in the season where we're at quarterback 2023 recruiting. Not ideal. Overall, things are changing fast. And I need Notre Dame to stay caught up and be quicker to adjust their processes to all these changes a lot faster than an old guy like me is able to process them and accept them in my head. Okay. I need Notre Dame to be a lot more nimble and adaptable in this environment than I am. I'll get there. But as an old guy, I'm struggling with some of this stuff. How a commitment doesn't mean it at all. What are we doing here then? I think it's fair of me to ask if you're verbally committed, but it's coin toss between that school and a few couple others. How are you commit? That's not the definition of commitment. If the other, the team you committed to isn't even the leader. Like it just logically can't be. All right. So it's, it's wild, but I need Notre Dame to be fully engaged, move with the times, not late to them the way I do thinking in my mind, you need to be in the mix, stay in the mix, get in the mix and be modern and do it harder than ever before, all right? This is where I need Marcus's personality to deliver on this recruiting. The job's never been harder than it is right now for all the issues we discussed. That's where I need a guy with this dynamic of a personality to figure out and make it work for us at Notre Dame. I say you get... CJ Carr in here, and it changes Notre Dame's NIL approach. I'm telling you, I'm Notre Dame starting quarterback CJ Carr. Next time you need one, come to the greater Mishawaka uh, Mercedes dealership. Get it going. Get it going like that. Use some of that. So I don't know, folks. It just feels like Notre Dame's treading water here. Uh, and we're just going to have to see how it goes. Um, so hopefully we get good news on the recruiting trail soon. It's just the Wild West out there, folks. I'm struggling keeping up. I just honestly am. Some of these changes, it just makes it so hard for a staff to get their work done. It, it's unbelievable. What do you think? What am I missing in all this? Let me know.